We welcome everyone today, whether you're here or you're online, we're glad that you have joined us. We want to thank those who worked at the Sharing Kitchen this week. In September, we'll have two guest speakers. The first one will be Dr. Dawn Edwards Morton on September the 11th, and she will share her testimony and she will probably share her Ministry of Operation Christmas Child. Just to remind you that this is a good time to buy school supplies for Operation Christmas Child boxes because they're all on sale now. Then on September 18th, we'll have evangelist Jim Montgomery here. He'll be our guest speaker, and we will take up a love offering for Jim. Our next outreach will be the Walk for the Pregnancy Center, which is September 17th. Next Sunday, we'll start to take pledges. Remember, the walk is a simple walk around the park if you're willing to be a walker and they always have lunch and there's fun things for the kids such as a bounce house if you have children you can bring your children along so we'll talk more about that next Sunday I have a letter that I want to share here from from Connie from the Ministry of Living Waters that we just sent supplies down to and this is what she had to say dear new hope friends do you remember this little chorus we sang in Sunday school he owns the cattle on a thousand hills the wealth in every mine wonderful riches more than tongue can tell he is my father so they're mine as well at a time when gas prices are going up food prices prices are skyrocketing and the cost of living continues to climb we are still blessed beyond measure the Lord has helped us complete a deck on one of the buildings here as well as finish paving an area that we started two years ago also a dear friend donated a four-wheel drive truck to help us negotiate some of the very steep rough roads that we travel while making our deliveries we have received some gift cards to help us purchase purchase emergency food and others are helping with gasoline costs 600 pounds of fresh meat were donated for our freezer and other friends are bringing canned goods to help our struggling food pantry all of these blessings keep us busy but we are thankful to be able to be a conduit to those in need just as there are needs in our area of the country, we also see many who are in need. Just in the last two weeks, we served a family of five who had no electricity or water in their house. In this 80 and 90 degree heat, an electric fan does them no good. We are finding others in need and also that we can help them as the Lord allows. Most importantly, we are sharing good news, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to those needy ones. Please pray for us. In the, for the lost in our community. Sincerely, Connie Boggs. So that's what's going on at Living Waters. That takes care of our announcements for today, so the children may line up at the back door, and a teacher will take you over to Kids Church. Thank you. I just want to remind you, um, Dawn Edwards Morton, um, she grew up right around the corner on Wayne Road, and uh, she attended the church in Hatton, Ohio. And if anybody knows anything about Hatton, it's about two miles that way, and uh, there's not much there. I believe her church that she attended would be about a fourth the size of this wooden area up front, maybe. Anyway, and so out of that, she is now a professor at the seminary in Ashland, and, and she's going to come back and share her story, so that should be a great time. If the ushers have come forward, we're going to take up our offering now. Um, keep in prayer, Landon Banky's going to have surgery Tuesday. Uh, I, I went that way. He's back here. Um, <laughs> surgery Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Um, also keep in prayer, Bob Brockschmidt for healing, and... Uh, Paula Walters just shared this morning, she is a, a friend she was sharing with, her name was Courtney, and she was thinking about starting a Christian daycare, and Paula encouraged her to do that, and she says she's starting her daycare, and she always has 22 children signed up to come to her Christian daycare, so, wow, you know, sometimes um, God just moves in all kinds of ways. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day that we can gather, Lord, that we can come and we can worship you and hear your word. Lord, we just thank you for being with us. Lord, we just pray that you'd be with Landon on Tuesday. Lord, just uh, guide the doctors who are going to be doing his surgery. Lord, just give them the skill and the wisdom that they need that everything goes well and Landon just recovers soon. Lord, we pray for Bob. We just pray you just touch his body. Lord, just, just encourage him. Lord, help him to continue to look to you and to trust you and, and just uh, help him keep his eyes on you. And Lord, we thank you for... Uh, this young lady that's starting this Christian daycare. Lord, I pray you just bless her, guide her, give her wisdom, and, and just uh, help her to be a witness to the families that come to her. Lord, we just thank you for your blessings. We thank you for watching over us, for always taking care of us. Lord, just help us to always be thankful and to give back to you a part of what you've blessed us with. So, Lord, just receive our offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, the disciples, the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And one of the petitions in that prayer was, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. We want God's will to be done. We want God's will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. One of the big things then is, well, what's God's will? You know, it's one thing to say, I want your will to be done. But then, well, what is his will? Well, I think some things are certain. You know, he gives us his word. He tells us there are certain things that are, are certain about his will. Um, I want to just look at a couple of them. I mean, the Bible's full of things that are God's will. But I want to just look at a couple to give you kind of a picture of what that means. And the first one's in 1 Timothy, the second chapter, the fourth verse. And it says that he desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is God's will for all men to be saved. Amen. That doesn't change. It is God's will for all men to be saved. Now, some might say, well, yeah, but all people aren't saved. That is true, but that doesn't change. It is still God's will for all men to be saved. He wants all men to be saved. We have a choice. Yes. We can choose him or we cannot choose him. But his desire, his will, is that everybody gets saved. Done. End of story. You know, God so loved the world that he gave. You know, some people think that God then should just save everybody. If that's his will, why did he just save everybody and we all go to heaven? And some people actually believe and preach that. It's kind of a universalist thing that, uh, you know, God loves everybody so much that we're all going to heaven. It doesn't say it. He said he desires that all men are saved. Then we have to make that choice. And then another one is in 1 John. In 1 John, the first chapter, the ninth verse. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's his will to forgive our sins. He wants to forgive us. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful because that's his will. We don't have to wonder. Well, I don't know. And sometimes we get in trouble because we start to think, well, you know, I, I really messed up, but I don't see how God could ever forgive me. Well, he does because it's his will. That's who he is. It's his will to forgive us when we sin. But it says, if we confess our sins. Okay, so again, we have to make a choice. We have to confess our sins, but it's his will to forgive us. It's his will to forgive us. And the, the last one I want to look at is in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God has a plan. He wants to give us a hope and a future. He doesn't want to hurt us. You know, he has a plan. He has a plan. And so then it's up to us to find the plan. I believe it's God's will that we, we can find that plan, but we have to seek him. And sometimes that's where it gets kind of difficult. You know, certain things are written down that says this is his will. But, you know, sometimes finding God's plan for my life is a little more difficult. You know, it says he has a plan. That's his will to, to give us a plan, a hope, and a future. And then I have to go through the process. Okay, Lord, what's your plan? What's your plan? 
And I believe there are some things that become obstacles to the will of God. You know, I believe God's will is set, but there's obstacles, I believe, for us to find that will sometimes. The noise, the noise come easy. I don't know about you, but there's sometimes it's a little more difficult. You know, sometimes, I, sometimes I actually think, Lord, what are you doing? Now, I know he's doing something. I'm just not always sure what it is. Or maybe at some moments I don't see what it is. You know, I think God, you know, I'm convinced God's always working. There's times I can't see it. But I know he's still working. But my human nature wants to see a few things once in a while. You know, I want to I wanna see something. I want to see what he's doing. But I believe there's obstacles, obstacles to that. Probably one of the big ones is my will. You know, we can, we're trying to find his will. I believe one of the biggest obstacles is my will. What is it that I want? Sometimes my pride and my selfishness keeps me from even seeking God's will. Maybe I've got it all figured out. You know, I, I know what I'm doing. I don't even need to seek him. I know, what, I know what it is. And so I'm just doing my thing. Maybe it's just my thing. Maybe it's just my will. So I don't even have a desire to seek him. You know, I think, hey, everything's fine. Everything's, everything's going good. Sometimes my unwillingness to surrender to his plan. I've heard people say, well, I'm not sure I want to surrender because I don't know what he's going to make me do. And maybe there's a little, little bit of truth in that. that. You know, I've seen times when God's will wasn't what I wanted to do. You know, it wasn't, wasn't what I was really thinking or the direction I really wanted to go. But I have to be willing to surrender to his will. Even though it's maybe not what I want to do. Am I willing to surrender to him? Surrender and say, okay, Lord, whatever it is, what do you want to do? What's, what's your will? You know, the Bible says, you know, his ways aren't my ways. Oh, wow. His ways aren't my ways. So that means a lot of times what I want isn't always what God wants. His ways aren't my ways. His thoughts aren't my thoughts. Actually, his are higher. So I ought to seek his will because his ways are better. His ways are better. But can I trust him? Can I trust him for that? You know, Jesus, Jesus said in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, in Luke, the 22nd chapter, the, the 42nd verse, Jesus asked God to take away the cup. You know, take away, take away what's coming. He knew what was coming. And he said, can you take this away? But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. I think it's okay to be honest with God and say, I don't know. This is tough. This is tough. This is hard. Are there any, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't know how you might say it, but, you know, are there any shortcuts? The answer is usually no. But, you know, it's okay to ask. Are there any shortcuts? Is there any, is there any other way? But bottom line, bottom line, nevertheless, not what I want, but what you want. You know, bottom line. Bottom line, it's, it's not what I want, it's what you want. So Lord, help my desire to be your desire. Help my desire to be willing to do your will, not what I want to do. I believe another big obstacle in seeking the will of God is the influence of others. Did you ever notice people are always willing and eager to give advice and direction? Sometimes even if you don't ask for it, they'll tell you what you ought to do. You know? You don't even have to ask for it. Now, well, you know what you ought to do? And I'm not saying, you know, that it's not bad to look for advice, but where do you look for advice? Whose direction are you looking for? Who do you want to give you direction? You know, and you, I think it's important we seek Christians Amen. with wisdom. I'd like to tell you all Christians have wisdom, but they don't. 
just thought I'd throw it out. Okay. Seek Christians with wisdom that have been there, done that. People who have tested and tried. You know, there's something about tested and tried. You've been through the ups and the downs. You've been through the hard times. You know, you've trusted God to be faithful. Well, he's always faithful, but I have to trust him. I have to trust him. So it's good to seek wisdom from people who have been through it. You know, just, yeah, it gives you wisdom. You know, you gain a lot of wisdom going through stuff. You know? I mean, don't be afraid of failure. I always tell people, no, don't be afraid of failure. You can learn a lot failing. Amen. You get a lot of wisdom failing. Yes. You go, wow. Some things, is, some wisdom is don't do that again. <laughs> you know, I always thought it was pretty wise to ask somebody that's been through stuff because they could help me to avoid some pitfalls maybe. You know, maybe they had enough wisdom to say, oh, no, you better not do that. You know, I've always, I've always appreciated people who have wisdom. You know, I remember going through some hard times, and there was one person in special, especially that used to say to me, now this is what's going to happen, and here's some wisdom for you. And at first I, oh, okay, well then I realized they really knew what they were talking about. They had wisdom. They had wisdom. Sometimes people who give us advice have motives. I'm always hesitant to take advice, and I'm not saying never, but you know, you be careful with taking advice from people who have motives. You know, they want something. They want me to do something because it's going to help them. You know, a lot of times that's why people give you direction and advice. Well, you need to do this because eh, it'll be better for me. You know, so, you know, sometimes we just need to realize that, you know, we got to be careful. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Um, people who have motives, their direction may cost you. May cost you. And most of all, keep you from hearing the will of God. Keep you from hearing exactly what it is God wants to be telling you. Another thing that I believe can hurt us is ignorance of God's word. If you want to know his will, but you never read his word, you're going to have a really hard time. You're going to have a really hard time. It's going to be hard to hear his, hear his voice. Because he speaks from his word and he never disagrees with his word. And if the Spirit's telling you something, the Spirit telling you something is not going to disagree with the word. Okay? So I just, important to remember that we need to know what the word of God says. And if we're ignorant of that, we're going to have a hard time. We're going to have a hard time. It's going to be difficult. And a lot of times when we want to hear what God says, for some reason, he makes us wait. For some reason, he says, you know, you need to wait. Now, what I found waiting does is waiting usually works on me. You know, waiting is a process, and it usually, it usually works on me. Teaches me something, prepares me, gets me in a place that I can hear what he's saying. And personally, I am very impatient. You know, some things I'm very patient about and people say, oh, you have so much patience. Well, I want to tell you, inside of me is a very impatient being. There is a thing inside of me that is not patient. And I don't wait very good sometimes. I'm, I'm a Nike person. I want to get her done. You know, I... I I always like that model. Get her done. That's my thing. Get her done. You know? Well, sometimes that gets you in trouble. It gets you in trouble because you're getting something done before it's time to get her done. Um, in Psalms 38, 15, it says, For in you, O Lord, I hope, you will hear, O Lord, my God. It's in you that I hope. I put my trust in you. I wait for you. I have to remind myself, I have to wait for you, Lord. And, and it just, it just, it's against my nature, you know? And so I have to learn. I have to learn. Waiting is okay. Being patient is okay. And then in Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth verse, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Oh, I, that, well, that's where I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable leaning on what I can understand. That's where, that's where I'm, okay, I understand that. I understand that. Okay, so now I've got to trust God and I can't lean on my understanding. That means, that means a lot of times I don't know. I don't know. I don't like telling people I don't know. You know? Sometimes even as a pastor in a church, I don't, I don't like standing up saying, well, I don't know. And everybody in the church goes, well, if you don't know, what are we supposed to do? You know? Well, it's okay. It's an okay place. I don't know. We're waiting on the Lord. We're going to trust Him. You know? Well, that makes me uncomfortable. Well, yeah, don't lean on your own understanding. It'll make you uncomfortable. It'll make you uncomfortable. And then I believe when we want to hear the will of God, we have to just take one step at a time. Amen. One step at a time. In Psalms 37, Psalms 37, 23. It says, this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. You know, we just, the will of God. Sometimes it's one step at a time. I don't want to do one step at a time. I want to know where I'm going. I want to know what the outcome is. I want to know what's going to happen when I take that step. You know, I don't want to just go one step at a time. I want to know the destination. I want to see where I'm going before I want to know if I want to take a step. That's not how it works. It's one step at a time. I got to just share a little, I debated about sharing this. You know, some things are just, I don't know. Did you ever see God work in your life and it's just some simple little thing? You know? Well, I, I'll share the simple little thing. So, you know, we've been, um, Chloe's and gave us a lawnmower and Alice gave us a lawnmower and uh, the church, and so we've been, I've been bouncing around the church lot, you know, bouncing up and down and shaking and mowing, and, and there's rocks up there, and I've been hitting rocks, and, but the mowers kept going, and the other day the mower um, linkage came off, and the, um, I couldn't steer it. And it's kind of wore out, and I got a neighbor that says, well, he thought he could weld it, so the mower's over at the neighbor's getting welded. And I was thinking, well, you know, it'd be nice to have a mower, you know, a little bigger mower. And then I thought, well, probably shouldn't be buying a mower when trying to build a church, you know, probably ought to put the money towards a building instead of a mower. And so the other night we were going to uh, the funeral home in Pemberville, and I drove down the road, and the neighbor had a zero-turn mower sitting out in his front yard. And we were on a real time schedule, so... You know, there was no stopping, but I thought, wow, that's more. I thought, well, you know, when we come back home, I'll check on that. And we come back home, and it was gone. And I thought, oh, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, oh, well. Well, the next morning I woke up and had to go somewhere, and I thought, I'm going by that house and see that mower still there. So I drove by it, thinking it'd probably be sitting back out, I don't know. And I drove by, it wasn't sitting there. It was gone. And on the way home, I thought, I'm going to go by there again. Yeah. I don't know. And lo and behold, the mower was sitting there. Yeah. I thought, wow, you talk about guiding your steps. I'm like, wow. And I stopped, and I, I talked to him, and I ran the mower, and, and this and that, and he told me how much he wanted for it, and it was reasonable, and the mower seemed to be in pretty good shape, and, oh, you know, I don't know. I, I, get, I You know, I always, you know, spending the church's money, I take real seriously. I feel very accountable for that, okay? So I take that very seriously. And I'm like, okay, Lord, you know. And, and so he was asking well, he's asking $2,000 for it. And, and so I checked. I got home, and I, I checked with a couple of people. I said, what do you think? Everybody, yeah, okay. So I called him back, and I said, well, would you take 1800 <laughs> Now, see, Jesus was a Jew, so. 
I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, so he said yes. He said yes. He said he was he was willing to do that, and and so you know we got more. It's got 364 hours on it, and um, I, I run it. You know what a blessing, what a blessing. But you know he 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 had to order my steps, you know, and. I could have easily given up, but I don't know. You know, it just, he ordered my steps. It wasn't a matter, of, it just, okay. And so afterwards, I go, wow, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. He's faithful. Yes. He's faithful. You know, but I got to be patient. And, and that sometimes gets really hard, really hard for me. Another thing that will keep us from um, hearing the will of God is willful sin. Um, turn to John, the third chapter. John, the third chapter, the 19th and 20th verse. It says, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who practices evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Now, I'm talking about willful sin. What is willful sin? Sin is what we do when we don't care. I'm doing it anyway. I don't care. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, I'm not talking about sin where you, you wasn't your intent, but you did it, and it was wrong. I'm talking about willful sin, okay? So when we get to a point where we say, I'm doing this, I don't care what, at that point it says that we can't see the light. That we, we can't see the light. You know, we won't be able to know the will of God. We're out of his will. We're out of his will. In Proverbs, the 28th chapter, Proverbs, the 28th chapter, the 13th verse. It says... He who covers his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes him will have mercy. Happy is the man who is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Hardens his heart. Covers our sins. That's a condition. That's a condition where we, we don't confess our sins, we cover our sins. And the Bible says, he who hardens his heart. I want to tell you something. If you continually walk in sin, your heart will become hardened. It'll get so hard, you won't, even, you won't even feel bad about it. You'll just do it, and you don't care. You don't care what anybody thinks. And people say things like, well, I don't care. If you don't like it, lump it. You know, I don't care. I don't care. And we're basically saying to God, we don't care. But if we're in that condition, you're not going to hear the will of God. At that point, the will of God is for us to confess our sins. That's his will. You know, now, can we do that? Yes. You know, we can always confess our sins. God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Another one that really works against hearing the will of God is doubt. Doubt. You know, I don't think God can do it. Now, it's not just having a, well, I'm not sure. This is, a, I don't think God can do it. Um, he's, not, he's not able. I doubt that God has a plan for me. Why would I seek his will? I doubt I could even hear his will. I doubt if I'm good enough to hear his will. It's just me. I'm nobody. Doubt. In James, the first chapter, beginning at the fifth verse, it says, If any lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. You know, when you have doubt, it's going to be hard to hear the will of God. And if you do hear it, you're probably going to doubt that that was really the will of God. That's true. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just a condition. 
It's a condition of our heart. It's a condition where we trust him and we put faith in him. Otherwise, we doubt. And when you doubt, you question everything. You question things. Now, do we have doubts sometimes? Yeah, we have doubts sometimes, but hopefully we come to the word and we build our faith up and deal with the doubt. You know, but if you don't, then you're just going to doubt and you have a hard time hearing the will of God. It's going to be real difficult. The last one is, sometimes we're just flat out too busy. Too busy. When's the last time you really sat down and really got quiet and said, okay, Lord, show me. Show me. Tell me. You know, reveal yourself. Let me know. What is it you want to do? Sometimes we're just too busy. And what are we too busy doing? My own plan. I'm too busy doing my plan to hear God's plan. You know? And sometimes, especially if things are going good. You know, if things are going good, why do I need another plan? Why do I need God's plan if things are going good? If that's true, what does God have to do? He somehow got to rock my boat. You know, if that's true, if I'm doing my plan and I'm doing it my way and God wants to reveal himself to me, he's got to do something to change my thoughts. And usually that's something that I don't like. Something happens to get me to think, oh, huh, wonder if, wonder if I ought to be doing something different. I wonder if I ought to be doing this or that. You know, and if we're too busy, we're probably not reading his word. We're probably not reading his plan. If we're too busy, we're probably not praying. We're probably not seeking him. And if we're too busy, we're not in fellowship with believers who can help us. We're just too busy. Just too busy. And so it may be difficult to hear the plan of God. You know, but I believe God has a plan for every one of us. God has a plan. It'll change. It changes sometimes. You know, what biggest plan is, he plans for all of us. His desire is for every man to be saved. That's his basic plan, the big plan, is he desires for all men to be saved. But we got to trust him. And we have to put our trust in him. You know, that, okay, I trust your plan. I trust what you want to do. And sometimes we have to wait. It makes it hard. Maybe some people wait. You know, I guess I'm just saying for me, you know, and maybe some of you wait a lot better than I do, and God bless you. You know, we all got our problems, but one of my problems is waiting. You know? But, you know, usually God makes us wait. They that wait upon the Lord. You know, shall have their strength renewed. I like that part. It says they will run and not grow weary. I'd like to just walk and not grow weary. <laughs> I'm past that running thing. <laughs> but you know, what it's saying is, you'll keep doing his will and you won't give up. Amen. You'll keep on. We trust him. We put our trust in him. We wait on him. Lord, it's in your hands. You know, we sing those songs, I surrender all. Sometimes in the middle of those songs, I want to stop and say, okay, everybody, wait a minute. You guys didn't mean that. You held something back. I saw you. You know, you know I just want us to think sometimes. And we sing, and, and we should sing those songs, but you know, we sing and say, I surrender all. I surrender all to you, Lord. And then in reality, it's like, well, most everything. You know, but... Our desire should be to surrender all. That I trust him. That God's got a plan better than mine. You know, that I can, I can trust him and seek him. That I can, I can find his plan. I can find what he wants to say to me. So that's my prayer for each and every one of us. You know, personally, you know, what's God's plan for you? What's God's plan? He's got a plan. And he's never done with you. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you do, he's never done. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. We have to seek him. 
I, I wanted to I wanted to say something before in my sermon. And I I'm done. So by the way, um, <laughs> I just say that because um, <laughs> I didn't want to mess up my sermon. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. Um, today, Lauren, um, Lauren Heskis with us. And a lot of you probably don't know Lauren and Heskis, but Lauren's in the wheelchair in the back. And um, Lauren, you know, um, she's one of my greatest admirers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she can't speak. Um, it, it appears like, you know, she's not always sure what's going on. But over the years, when I preached, and that's why they sat in the back, and I went, you know, when we were up here doing worship, I wanted to say, come on up front. Because what she would do is, Lauren would yell out during my sermons. <laughs> you know? And here's what I believe. Lauren has a spirit. And when I preach, her spirit being would respond. Okay? What an encouragement. What an encouragement. So, that's why I didn't share before. And you know what? I'll be honest about me. I don't a lot of times share that stuff. I mean, I'm full of that stuff. I just want you to know I'm full of it. But I don't share it because it's just so hard. <laughs> you know, but I felt it was important. Important. You know, we all receive in our spirit. You know, it's got to get past your understanding. Believe it or not. Yeah, you understand, you make choices, but I want to tell you something. Until it gets down in your spirit, it's really not a part of you. You know, it's not a part of you. So, be that what it may. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> um, we do pick up chairs. for, for the, We pick up just the chairs that are single chairs, not the ones around the table. We pick them up today. Okay, let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you have a plan. Lord, you haven't left us down here without a plan for each and every one of us. Lord, forgive us for those times when we stray and we get involved in our own plan and, and Lord, we get off on maybe a side road. But Lord, just help us to stay following you. Lord, we continue to seek you. Lord, we trust you to guide our steps. Lord, we trust you to show us the way. Lord, we just thank you for that love that you have for us. Lord, as we go forth this week, Lord, just help us to remember that you have a plan and that, Lord, we need to trust you and allow you to work your plan in our life today, tomorrow, and then in the future. Lord, we just thank you for that. Just bless each and every one that's here today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.